Welcome to Guide to IELTS. In this video, we'll write a semi-formal letter in response to this IELTS general training, writing task one question. You and your family are living in rented accommodation in an English-speaking country. You're not satisfied with the condition of some of the furniture? Write a letter to the landlord. In your letter, introduce yourself, explain what is wrong with the furniture, say what action you would like the landlord to take. First step, read the question carefully. Make sure you understand every aspect of it thoroughly. This one is a rather straightforward question. There are not too many details in here. But be on a lookout for little things that can change the answer that you write. For example, if the question had said that you are living in a rented apartment or maybe living in a rented house, you would need to write your answer accordingly. Here it just says rented accommodation, so it can mean either of the two. Before I start writing, I'll have it clear in my mind whether I'm writing about staying in an apartment or a house. It would be clearly mentioned that you need to start your letter with Dear Mr. Blank or Dear Miss Blank. In the blank, you can put the surname of the person. Sometimes you may already be given a name. For example, it could say, write a letter to your landlord, Mr. Brown. And then it would be written, start your letter with Dear Mr. Brown. If no name is given, you can write any name you want. But if a name is given, it is important that you start with exactly the name that you're given. And as for the ending, we end the semi-formal letters with yours sincerely, followed by our full name. Writing of a letter doesn't require too much planning. Once you have understood the question thoroughly, just think about a couple of things you would write as answer to each of the points. It is crucial that you answer all the three points thoroughly. And having three paragraphs in your letter corresponding to the three points is a good idea. So in Introduce Yourself, it's simple. I write my name followed by the address of the apartment that I'm living in. And I could also mention who I live with, like my family and how long I've been living there. The main part starts with explain what is wrong with the furniture. The question clearly says you're not satisfied with the condition of some of the furniture. You have to write about at least two pieces of furniture, otherwise it will be considered as an incomplete answer. So go in for two, maximum three things to write about, not more than that. So I'm thinking I'll write about the dining table. Maybe I can write that the paint is chipped off. It is a health risk. I could mention the couch. And then I'm thinking along with the dining table, maybe I can mention the chairs also. That'll be more than enough. One mistake that I've seen often as a response to this letter is a confusion between the word furniture and woodwork. Woodwork refers to the windows and doors and cupboards, the fixed items around the house which are made of wood. Furniture, on the other hand, refers to the movable items, the chairs, the table, sofa, bed. It could be of wood, but it could be of some other materials as well. So if, as part of this letter, you write that one of the complaints you have is that the door doesn't close properly, that would be incorrect. Door is not part of the furniture. The third point, say what action you would like the landlord to take. So I could ask him that I'd prefer you replace these pieces of furniture, and if not, get them repaired. Now this third point could have been, ask what the landlord would do. So in that case, the response to this would be asking the landlord what he wants to do, not telling him what you want done. As usual, the same point, read the question carefully, make sure you're answering exactly what is asked. Now, once we have thought about what we are going to write, before we start the actual writing, we quickly think about the vocabulary that we could use. It just mentioned accommodation here. So I could write either a house or I could write an apartment or a flat. Instead of living, I would write residing or am a resident of, not satisfied with something. So I can obviously write dissatisfied with it. Other words that I can think of are to be unhappy with something or not be happy with it. And if I want to add to my lexical resource score further, I can simply try to incorporate words like satisfaction and dissatisfaction instead of satisfied and dissatisfied. It's a variety of words that add to your score, not just the big words. And different forms of the same word are also counted as different words. There are some other words and phrases that are coming to my mind. I'll just list them over here and a few of these I'll be using in my letter. I'm thinking of the phrase, to my great disappointment. Maybe I could write that something was good to look at, 
when I initially saw it, but to my great disappointment, when I actually used it, it was not in a good condition. Another word that is coming to my mind is something being uncomfortable or something being cause of great discomfort. I mentioned the difference between the words furniture and woodwork a while ago. Another word is furnishings. When we mention furnishing, we mean not just the furniture, but also other things like curtains and carpets that are in the house. So this is one word I would not mention because the question very clearly states furniture. However, we could use the word fully furnished or partly furnished. For example, I could write that I adopted for a fully furnished apartment because I didn't want the headache of buying furniture or maintaining it. Another word that I am thinking of is upholstery. This refers to the fabric that is used on furniture. For example, the fabric of the couch would be upholstery. To describe poor condition of furniture, I could say battered condition or shabby condition. So effectively, I do not have a synonym for the word furniture as such. All the other words and phrases I've thought about. The best I can do is write pieces of furniture. So in case we are not able to think of words to replace some words that we have in the question, we try our best to replace the other words around them rather than write something incorrect. Let's start the writing of the letter now. I'll start with Dear Mr. Smith. This is Param Singh, your tenant at apartment number 102 on 5th Avenue. I've been a resident here with my wife and two kids for the past one year. So I could have written any time period here for the past one week or six months or one year because the question does not mention anything about since when I've been living there or since when have I been having these problems. Had the question mentioned you recently moved into an apartment, then I would have written something like for the past couple of weeks or a few days only. The next paragraph in which I'll detail out the problems that I'm facing. First, I'll just write this sentence where I'll mention why I'm writing. I'm writing regarding certain issues that we are facing because some pieces of furniture are in a rather battered condition. Now I'll write about the dining table first. The paint on the dining table is fraught with scratches because of which small pieces of paint keep chipping off. Instead of fraught with, I could simply write, the dining table is full of scratches. Now I want to write that the table doesn't look good and it is also a health risk because the children can eat the paint that is chipped off. I'll use the connector not only but also to write this. Not only does it adversely impact the aesthetic appeal of the living room, aesthetic appeal means the look, the beauty, but it is also a health risk as my children may ingest the chipped paint. Next one about the couch. Moreover, the couch in the TV room is in a shabby condition. The upholstery already had small tears when we had moved in, which have with time become noticeably bigger, so much so that urgent action needs to be taken. Even the dining room chairs can also use a coat of paint. The next paragraph now, in which I'll request the landlord to replace these pieces of furniture, and if that's not possible, I'd request him to send some handyman or some carpenter over to repair them. Therefore, I would really appreciate if you could get the dining set and couch replaced. If it is not possible to do so, I request you to send a handyman or carpenter to survey the furniture and get it repaired at the earliest possible. Do ask him to call me before he comes over. And I'll sign off with... I'd be grateful if you make this a priority and take prompt action. Yours sincerely, Param Singh. It is important to get the tone right when you're writing a semi-formal or formal letter. For example, if I had written, I want you to send a carpenter to repair these, it would have been incorrect because the tone is wrong. It's more like you're ordering the person rather than requesting it. Even if you're complaining, in a formal or a semi-formal letter, it should be done politely. Also, the right adjectives or the right describing words are very important. For instance, in this case, if I write the furniture is faulty, that would be wrong because faulty is a word we use for gadgets and electronic items, not for furniture. Hope this helped you. Do like, share and comment and subscribe to our channel. All the very best.